wanted to take a minute and go over some of the features of the sawmill so people on the uh, homemade sawmill group on Facebook were interested. So I want to kind of give a once over of all the different parts. I'm going to start on the carriage here. On each side, first thing we'll start with are the fenders. These are removable because as you can see, they go down lower than the wheel. They do work, they catch the mud. So they just come off with these uh, thumb, thumb screws right here to remove when you get you know on location. Uh, a couple people were curious about my locking system, how to lock the carriage in position. What I have, you can see in here, we have a little tab welded on here with a coupling nut and a half inch bolt. So these half inch bolts, you actually just bolt it down in four positions. We got them on each side so that you can lock it in the transport position right over the axle with the ma major part of the weight of the axle. Okay, I'm gonna pull the fenders off real quick and then I'll go over some other features. Okay, I have the fenders removed and the carriage unlocked. I guess the next component we'll go over is my blade tensioning and tracking device. That's located right here. So the way I have this thing to work, in future, I might change this, but it does work for right now. I have a three quarter inch bolt that goes through here and there's a slot ground into this tube here. There's a threaded rod in this piece of pipe and as I tighten this nut around, this is loosening, but as I tighten, it pulls on this bolt here, pulls this straight back, giving me blade tension. The way that I track it, I have these four adjustment bolts, okay? And there's a piece of Teflon inside here to kind of help it slide a little bit. Mainly, when I'm tensioning it, I primarily only use these two bolts for the, the after I tension to track. And then these two bolts on either side are more of a locking bolt. In the future, what I might do is, I don't think I need all these, all four of these. I think if I weld a tab on here with a single single bigger bolt on this side, because naturally for the tracking, when you put tension on this blade, it naturally wants to kind of pull this side wheel kind of in. So to counterbalance that, if I have a bolt here pushing back, you should only really need one tension bolt and then the tension of the blade should keep it pulled tight. Um, I'm going to leave these lockers in here and I, I, you know, I'll use these too, but primarily I kind of want to just have one tension bolt. For right now, it's not a problem, just small design modification. If I was to do it again, that's what I would do with this. Okay, the next component we'll talk about is my blade guide system. What I have, what many others have used, these are the Cook's uh, roller guides. So I bought these whole units. It's way cheaper just to buy these rather than to try to machine these are pretty comp complicated to machine um, at home so it's just cheaper just buy them and what I did was this side here is fixed so I have this welded in position there and this one adjusted this guy here is on a sliding arm so this is like quarter inch wall heavy wall tubing and it comes over to this side and as you can see I have a bolt here on the uh, one side and then I have a bolt over here on the outside. These lock by forcing the inner tube up in this corner so it holds it perfectly at 90 degrees. Uh, this has been working just fine. Um, one modification I did just to give myself maximum, like right now my motor is only 12 horse so I can't really cut the capacity of what I kind of designed this mill to do. But what I wanted is if you pull this all the way open, you can see your distance here it limits you now if I wanted to get the extra couple inches what I did was I cut this tube here and I have a how would you put it I have like basically a, a solid piece of steel inside here like a lug and there's set screws holding it in to hold it level and then this nut here 
runs all the way through and is threaded in. So you tighten this nut and it pulls these two halves together. You can barely see the seam and it keeps this all in one. This way, if I do ever need to remove this, I can because it's there's not enough room for it to slide out the other side. So basically this was how I fixed that problem. I just made this in two piece, you know, so the handle and everything works. So that would be my blade guide system. Next part of the puzzle here, we'll talk about, this is pretty straightforward. Every mill is gonna have one. You're gonna have some sort of engine on here. So this is a old Kohler, Kohler uh, K301, 12 horsepower, but it's almost 500 cc. So I suspect the horsepower rating would be more equivalent to a modern uh, 14 or 15 horsepower motor. So what we have here, pretty simple setup. Pulley is, uh, I think it's called an H, H bushing. I have a pulley mounted to the motor, and then it goes down, and my other pulley, my driven pulley, is down here, which is connected to this drive shaft right there with those three pillow block bearings. I have a single belt, seems to be working just fine. I never had any belt slipping or anything. The way, instead of having a clutch, I just have a simple lever clutch system. What we have, there's this arm, is in the shape of an L and it goes to this idler wheel. What the tricky part with this took me a minute to figure it out, but as long as your pivot point, so this pivot point has to be higher than this pivot point for this to work. I have a piece of threaded rod in here that I can adjust the length so I could get my throw right. So as you pull this lever down, as this one goes over center, it'll actually just lock itself down. And then you adjust how much tension you want with the threaded rod, you know, to adjust for the squeeze. And then that will push up on this belt, give me all the tension I need to drive the blade through the log. So pretty simple lever system. Once it's adjusted, it, it's really quite easy. So just go up, push it down. And then once you get past that over center, it holds itself down. No locking mechanism or anything is needed. For electrical system, right now there is a deep cycle 12 volt marine battery inside this box. It's the charging system, the, the generator inside this motor seems to be keeping up, keeping this charged. So the power comes out of here at 12 volt. I have it, yeah, you know, these are the, the, uh, Regulator for the motor and the starter solenoid down here protected underneath that motor plate Over here this little box This is a step-up converter So what that does is it takes 12 volts and converts it into 24 volts The reason I had this is my lift motor on this. It's from a razor scooter little uh, mini electric scooter that motor is located up top here and then this little guy here, these are like 35 or $40 on Amazon. These will, this is the, all I'm using to drive my motor. I have a small pulley on this side to a large pulley because this spins really fast. Like I think it was like 3000 RPMs. So you gear it down with the pulleys and you get a nice speed. And then that drives my chain, which spins my threaded uh, acne thread rod on either side. And they just go down to the bottom and they're in bearings at the bottom so the rods themselves spin and inside this piece of steel i have a bronze acne threaded bushing fastened in there and then that's what actually lifts this whole carriage up seems to work great um what the only thing i'd say you have to do is you have to use it's called a pwm speed controller that's located inside the power box here not going to be able to see it but it's behind here it's this little box and then this knob here labeled speed this adjusts your percentage of power to the motor and with the pwm controller instead of just using a, a something like a rheostat that alters the voltage this the motor gets the constant 24 volts that it needs to run and then it it basically uh, I guess in the simplest way to explain it is it turns on and off the motor at varying rates very fast, which results in a variable speed. 
So that's how that works. You can look up, read more about them. I'm sure somebody else can explain it better, but that's how I get my variable speed because usually when you're going up, you can have it turned up more, but when you are lowering the head down, you know, you only need to run it about 50% because you got gravity on your side. Another little component I'll talk about in the electrical is this box here. This was a good idea, at least I think so. This, you buy these, this is a trailer um, wiring harness box for like a big, you know, if you had like a long, like big 18 wheeler trailer and it comes with this pigtail on here. And then I think there was seven or eight wires, individual wires inside here. And then there's a block with lugs. So all my wiring, you could see behind here, all these different colored wires get into this distribution block go into this one wire which I have looped up and around for as the head goes up and then that just goes into the bottom of my control panel and then I'll have my up and down control my motor start stop main power hour meter and speed control so that wiring system really cleaned everything up it was a simple way to have only one big wire going into the control panel pretty cost effective too Okay, over at our control panel area, I kind of designed everything is able to operate from this location. So you don't have to move around on the mill. Okay, we saw the control panel and all the parts there. My throttle for the motor is mounted here. You know, down is full throttle. So down on my PTO arm and down on my throttle. Same, you know, you need to do both in order to cut. Over here, I have my scale my uh, digital readout, we'll call it. We have a piece of stainless steel angle iron mounted directly to here. And then what I do is I just actually slide this. This is on magnets, okay? So I can just slide this up and down, you know, whatever, you know, if I'm gonna start, if I wanna do a one inch cut, I'll level it out at a number, I'll slide it up to the next number, you know, maybe go over a little bit for the thickness of the blade, and it works. It's real simple. This other magnetic ruler, what I'm going to do with this guy, I'm going to calibrate this one and leave it stuck correlating to inches off the bed. So whenever, you know, wherever this sits on here will correlate to how many inches the blade is off the bed. Sometimes that's handy when you're getting down to the bottom because um, since this scale moves all the time, there's no way to reference that. So I want to have an idea when I know when the carriage is at basically at zero position, which for mine is an inch and three quarters off the bed, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Couple other components that we didn't cover so far. Up here, we have tensioners for the chain tension. There's a slot cut in, that, in this piece of square tube right here with a bolt through it. And then this bolt just pushes it in, giving you tension. I have one on each side. So that gives you my tension. You could see my round stock here. This is what the carriage slides up and down on. There's uh, bronze bushings pressed into the tops of these pipes here on either side, so that rides nice and smooth. Gas tanks mounted up top, it's just a boat fuel tank. I put a little pumper on it to make it a little easier to get it primed. And the roof. I recommend everybody that makes one of these put a roof on it. It's just a couple pieces of that corrugated metal and it keeps the majority of sun and rain off of this. It's just a little roof, it goes down the road just fine. I made mine removable with these pins in case I do want to take it off for some reason. But for now, I've just been leaving it on there. It works really nice. So it protects you know, all the chains and stuff, keeps everything from getting rusty. On the back side here, we have, this is a PVC pipe here. Holds about, I'd say two or three gallons of, of blade coolant. Uh, right now I have uh, windshield washer fluid in there since it's been cold. The valve for that is right here, just a little dripper valve, real simple. And then this bar back here, this piece here, I put in as a stabilizer. It's removable and adjustable. So there's this, this arm pivots away and you can kick this thing off. I have it kind of in the middle position, just gives it a little more rigidity because most of the time you're cutting, you're cutting down in the lower section. But if you put some massive log on it, 
you know, I wanted this removable just in case. And then like, if you want, you could, I have had it down here and it runs really, it's a really nice rigid setup when you put it down here, but you run into clearance issues. So I think I'm mostly gonna leave it up in that position. Just stabilizes, you know, between the back two arms. So that should wrap up the overview on the carriage. I guess if you have any questions or anything or want any more details, you know, put it down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Okay, well, we're going to move on to uh, the trailer part next. Okay, the trailer bed for my sawmill is 20 feet long. This should allow for me to cut a maximum of, I was shooting for 16. It should do a 16, but really you could probably eke out a 17 foot if you had to, but a 16 comfortably. Okay, inside, what I have here is stainless steel on the top. So my rails are stainless. I don't have to worry about them getting messed up. I left the paint, you know, up to here, and then that's just stainless on the top. Let's start at the front here. We have this piece here, this receiver. I have a winch that I can put in here in the event I needed to drag a log on here for some reason. That was a little extra part I made. The tongue is bolted on with four bolts. So this is removable for two reasons. If it's if I set this up in a stationary position, you could take this off so you don't bang your leg on it. Also, anti-theft device. If you take off the tongue, it'd be awfully hard to roll away with the thing. I have, these are 5,000 pound jacks. I have six of them total, the four corners and in the middle. These plates on the ends, these act as my stops, but they are also removable in case um, I ever needed to make a bed extension or something. I can unbolt these and extend it if I needed to. I also like to spray fluid film inside these channels. A couple times, you know, once in a while, you spray some fluid film in there, prevent any rusting from the inside out. My rail system that the carriage rides on, we have these V-groove wheels, and we have an inverted V, quarter-inch wall, um, angle iron welded on top. And that's that's what this thing rolls on. It seems to work just fine. Earlier, we were talking about how my when I'm all the way down the carriage, as you can see, I'm sitting all the way down. Right now, if we push this back, you can see I got it's 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 under two inches. Okay. When I designed this, I was kind of shooting for around two inches, thinking mostly for slabs and stuff. But as I started cutting, I realized, you know, it'd be kind of nice if the blade could get closer to, you know, a zero position or, you know, a one inch off of the bottom rail. So as an afterthought to correct this problem, I made these simple little pieces out of one inch by two inch rectangular tubing so what these guys do they just have tabs on them they just clip right on top they hit my stops that i have welded these stops are welded permanently on these hit and stop and they also have their own little stops on them and that works just fine that raises me up one more inch so it gets me so my last cut can be about an inch thick instead of a two inch thick less waste you know if you're cutting five quarter boards or one inch boards or even three quarter boards you get kind of get an extra board having these i don't run these on it all the time usually if i'm get down to that situation where i need them then i just pop them on it's no big deal i pop them on set the log down on there the last board and i make my final cuts okay the other component we're going to talk about is the clamping system i have another video all about making these clamps and uh how they were machined and all but this is how they actually work on the mill i have this is a one inch solid round bar i have these little plates i made it's a little piece of uh, bar stock here with a piece of pipe welded on it so this pipe actually slides in to these as you can see it's drilled and tapped on both sides the reason i did that is because instead of having to build a bunch of these i only built three and I have two positioned close together, like in each bay. So we got one in this bay, one in that bay. Then I skipped a bay and came down here. So depending on the length of the log, 
If it's a real short guy, I can get it with two clamps. If it's more of a medium guy or a long guy, I can get all three clamps. And if for some reason, you know, I'm cutting something really long, all I need to do is unbolt those four bolts and they're drilled and tapped. Each bay is already drilled and tapped. So I already got this all set up so I can put these in any of these bays. And then I'll be able to clamp, you know, anything. But for right now, having two close together and the one a little bit further back has been working just fine. In also in each bay, I have stops that this would be my log stops, my t taller ones. Eventually, I'm going to cut these at an angle, making it a little easier to flip the log. But these just simply, again, stainless steel, just slide right in. And then you got these, you tighten these up pushes it in, holds it perfectly at 90 degrees. I have one of them in each bay, so they can be positioned wherever. I have some different lengths of these. It's not as fast as if they were all connected together, but for simplicity and for my purposes, because I'm not in a rush, you know, you, you usually run about two of these for a log and you get them set to the height and always pay attention to how high you are so that you don't run your blade into them. So that should sum up the trailer for you. If there's any other questions, like I said earlier, you know, go ahead and put that in the comments and I can go over something more in depth. But that would be the overview of the sawmill. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you later.